The trouble with old steam locomotives, many and varied. In this case, it's part three and it's making the speedy locomotive do what it's supposed to do. And yes, the good news is I got the job of repairing these two very old locomotives. I was going to leave the speedy until later, but I just couldn't live with it not working. And here from the video the other day is about the best that it would do. It tries to work, but it can't work. The question is, is this a piston valve problem where one of the rings on the bobbin has broken up and gone down the port? Or am I looking for too complicated a problem? Is it something simpler? There's only one way to find out. Take it apart and have a look at it. I know the other day I said I was going to do these locomotives one at a time, but I woke up this morning, da 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 da, with this speedy locomotive on my mind, da 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 da. I had to find out what was wrong with this speedy locomotive. It's part of my weird condition. Once I start something, I have to finish it, generally speaking, and I do get obsessed very easily. Oh no, not silicone rubber again. The last person who worked on this engine did something at the cylinders, I don't know what he did. But when he put the covers back on, he used silicone rubber to seal the joint. I would prefer to make a gasket, and that way you can take the cover off whenever you like. As you've just seen, as usual, I removed the cylinder cover using a Stanley knife blade and a very light tap with a hammer. And now using the same Stanley knife blade, I'm scraping away the silicone rubber. When I refit the cylinder cover, I will make a gasket. So what's the problem? You can see it very clearly. The piston is absolutely rusted solid into the cylinder, and so is the valve. Many times I've mentioned this in quite a lot of my videos, Whenever you run a steam engine, whether it's a locomotive or a stationary engine, if it has cast iron parts, run some oil through, and preferably some WD-40 as well. After I fixed it, I called the owner of the engine to tell him that I'd fixed it and asked him why I left the cylinder full of water after the previous run. He told me that the last time he ran this engine was in the evening, and after the running, he forgot to drain the cylinder. So now... It's time for some ultraviolence. I'll rephrase that. Some very controlled ultraviolence. Lots of very small taps with a hammer against a piece of brass bar, which in turn is against the piston. So I could keep the brass bar in the centre of the piston because the buffer beam's in the way. After the piston started to move, I selected a lesser diameter piece. And don't forget, it's very important to remove the valve linkages. If you're very busy banging away on the piston like I'm doing, if the valve gear is connected to the valves, then there could be a big problem, and you might end up mangling your valve gear if the valve is also stuck, which in this case it very much is. The valve at this side is firmly stuck, so I'm removing the small anchor link at the bottom of the valve gear, and now I can move the valve gear out of the way, so I can get just to the piston valve. You definitely do not want to sprain or break any parts of the valve gear, and some of the parts of these valve gears are surprisingly fragile. And now, using an even smaller piece of soft metal, I'm going to attempt to free off the valve. You will notice that I use lots of low-velocity hammer blows on the piece of metal, which, with the help of some WD-40, is just enough to free the rusted parts. And now I can almost rotate the wheels all the way around, but not quite. It still needs a bit more tapping on the piston. This really is very bad. There was a lot of water left in this cylinder, which badly rusted everything together. A much better way of doing this job is to totally dismantle the cylinder at this side. But the owner of this engine took my suggestion that we just get this to work, rather than going to town on it. The other engine needs a lot of work. This one is fairly rudimentary, the job is not difficult. But that's not the case with the other engine. If you've been watching the first two parts of this series, you should clearly see what I mean. The other engine is a bit of a disaster area. On the plus side, it's mainly completely worn out, so it has indeed done plenty of running. The main problem with a lot of steam locomotives is the complexity of the thing that you're working on. And the worst case scenario is that the cost of repair based on an hourly rate, once completed, exceeds the value of the steam locomotive itself. Back to this job for the moment, and this one's definitely worth doing. I'm refitting the valve linkages at both sides, making sure, of course, that I do tighten up the nuts thoroughly on the valve pins. 
This engine's fairly worn, it's done quite a lot of running, it's nowhere near as bad as the other one, and it's not yet ready for a rebuild, but it could do with some attention here and there. Its running condition is, I would say, about the same as a full-size steam locomotive in the early 60s. If you work a lot with steam locomotives, miniature ones I mean, you have to get used to the fact that as you run it, it will wear out. This is true with all engines, but steam locomotives are in a much more hostile environment. Under a panel at the front of the engine is a mechanical lubricator. This is a twin tank mechanical lubricator, one for each cylinder. And both of the pumps appear to work. I'm rotating them manually with the wheel on the end to get some more oil into the cylinders, because very shortly I'll be trying to run this engine. Time to fit the cover on the end of the piston valve chamber. This is held in place by one bolt, which is all it needs. It's a very low stress component. It's just to keep dirt out of the piston valve area. And it doesn't need a gasket or anything because there's no steam pressure at the other side of it. I really love steam locomotives. They were my first love going way, way back. But I have to admit they are dirty, mucky, filthy things. Very much like a girlfriend that I used to know. As previously shown, I'm connecting an air supply via the injector steam pipe. I'm using a piece of silicone rubber tubing and a tie wrap like this, and I'm still cutting them the wrong way. I haven't replaced the front cylinder cover yet because I'm hoping that the first blast of air blows away at least some of the debris in the cylinder. Out of curiosity, I'm feeding this locomotive with only about £30 per square inch, as you can hear from the whistle. When I turn up the pressure, everything's looking good. In case I have a problem, I'm only fitting the front cylinder cover using four bolts. This is still not on much pressure, that's why I keep blowing the whistle to show you that it's running on low pressure. And it's not too bad. The beats aren't terribly even, but then again, Part of the cylinder is still probably full of rust. This will take a while to wear away. Plus, often on these small rolling roads, the beats aren't as even as they could be, because don't forget, there isn't much flywheel effect on these small wheels. The inertia and flywheel effect occurs when the locomotive's on the track, rolling down the track. Here's my very small and very quiet compressor. It isn't a very high capacity compressor and soon gets exhausted. I'll turn the pressure up. Slowly the locomotive is getting better all the time. I've said before, steam locomotives are brutal. It's raw power. They're the Ferraris of the steam engine world. Well, maybe not all of them, but generally speaking, they work very hard. The harder the work the locomotive is given to do, the louder the blast is and more powerful, which in turn draws the fire, which in turn causes more heat, which in turn gives more steam and the cycle begins again. Keep your fingers out of the way of these at all times. All I need to do with this now for the moment is make a gasket for the front cylinder cover, bolt the front cylinder cover back in place and then generally test it. One of the clacks is a bit of a mess on the back head, so I'm going to change that for a new one. But apart from that, that's really about it. I've edited together all of the short runs on the bench. So I think it's time to stop talking and let the engine do the talking. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.
please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.